Telnet option I used yesterday um, to access network elements is not considered very secure because the passwords are sent in a clear text format. To avoid a potential breach in our security, we use SSH instead. Let's just pull out maybe lesson three. Uh, the topology save image as. Okay, that'll do. And okay, so my my router one will now be using SSH for access. So the address is 10.1.1.1. Now there's two things. So my password. When we access the router or switch, the lines used for Telnet or SSH are VTY lines, virtual terminal lines. They are at the very end of our configuration. So if I go for section VTY, currently I have a password enabled. Now if I want to encrypt those passwords, there's a service password encryption command. So now all the passwords are encrypted. Um, Previously, there were the password was shown in a clear text format. So the command service password hyphen encryption is doing the encryption of all the passwords that are in a clear text format, just like that. They are crackable, but at least the potential person looking over our shoulder is not going to quickly find what the password is. But I don't want to use um, as uh, Telnet. So currently, the transport on those lines access is using either SSH or Telnet. I want to change it. So how do I enable SSH? This, there are a few steps. Now, in order to use SSH, we need to generate an a, a key pair, RSA key pair, private and public keys. Public key is used by the client uh, to encrypt data and the private is used to decrypt the data uh, as it you know accesses the device so to do that we need a domain name defined on the device first if we don't have domain name keys won't get uh, generated let's actually see that happen so crypto key generate is my command if I try to do this now without the domain name configured first the system is going to yell at me saying that something's missing and that part is a domain name so it says, please define a domain name first. So IP domain name, I'll call it, let's say R1 local. That should do it. So since I have now defined domain name, r1.local, the crypto key generate RSA command should work. And it's asking me what should be the length of the key. I'm gonna go for 2048 bits, relatively strong. So now it's, creating a pair of RSA keys. The next step would be to ensure that only version two of SSH is enabled. So I'll say IP SSH version two, there's options so we can do a question mark. 1.99 is basically uh, an older version of, of SSH that allows one and two. So go, let's go for two. And now I need a username and password. So in the global configuration mode, I'll create a username admin with a secret password. And again, I'll go Cisco for simplicity here. In real life, obviously this should be proper length, upper lowercase special characters. Since this is the lab, I don't care. Now, so the password has been created with a username local, and now I need to go to line VTY04 and I'm gonna need to do the transport input only SSH and login local. Lo use locally defined username and password. So let's do show run, show run section VTY. What has changed is those lines. I have now transport input only SSH, not all and the login local database because the user is created locally to show run section actually includes username. I have this admin guy. 
So the easiest way to, to actually check this is uh, even on the, on the very box, I can SSH to myself minus L and admin. And the address is 10.1.1.1 as shown here. Oh, sorry. As shown here in the picture. So I'm SSHing to myself, so I don't even have to jump to any other device to do that. So once I do that, it's asking me for the password. The password is Cisco. And voila, I am logging to myself. So enable, for enable password, I type in the password, show users. Now the user is connected to VTY line zero. And if I do show SSH, there's a currently connected user admin version 2.0 in and out. So that proves that it's working. The last thing I want to do here is I'll do it. I'll enable um, PC1 uh, in my network. Now, PC1 and PC2 are actually routers. So how do we convert a router to a role of a PC? It's not that difficult. What we can do, let me jump to PC1, is assign first IP address on that box. So PC1 is going to be connected on Ethernet 00 interface, connected to the switch port 1.2. Now, how do I make a router a PC? First of all, I'll disable the routing. Instead, I will give it a default gateway, which is 10.1.1.1. Command is IP default gateway 10.1.1.1. And the reason I'm using router is because it's a virtual lab and it's easy for me to create a router and make it a PC for the purpose of the connectivity tests. So once this is done, I'm going to jump to E00 interface and I'll say IP address is going to be 10.1.1.1.1 with a mask 255.255.255.0 and I will bring this interface up. So those are the steps to create a, a PC out of a router device. So if I do show IP route command, which displays the routing table, there is none because I disabled routing up here. So instead it shows only ARP cache. So ARP cache is, ent is empty. Now let's just ping 10.1.1.1. So currently the spanning tree is working. We're going to talk about that later. So it, the port is going to be delaying for like 30 seconds before the transmission can go from the PC to that address. So what happens, and again, we'll discuss that later. What happens first is the uh, PC sending broadcast, ARP broadcast asking, what's the MAC address of 10.1.1.1? Once it's obtain, it obtains that MAC address, it can actually send the communication and voila, it works. So if SSH is already enabled on the router, SSH minus L for low for, for um, username, by the way, question mark, L means login with this username. So minus L admin and the address is 10.1.1.1. Is asking me for the password so it already works so password enable password and voila so as of right now i have this pc1 which is capable of sshing to router one but my switch has no configuration for ssh access so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open my text editor and pretend that i'm logged into a cisco uh, switch so the first thing is is go, go to a global config mode from the privilege mode. So assuming I'm in a privileged mode, I'm going to go conf T to take me to the um, uh, and to the global configuration mode. In here, I'm going to specify for SSH. We already know what to do. We need a domain name, IP domain name. I'll call it switch one dot local. And now I can generate the crypto RSA keys. Crypto key generate. RSA modulus. Modulus is a strength 2048 bits. So that command should generate the keys at 2048 bits. Once it's done, I need a locally defined user for access. Username admin secret will be, let's say, Cisco. And I need to go to VTY lines to enable from 0 to 4 space 4 and do transport input SSH only and login local 
to use locally defined username for access. Now I'm going to end this configuration, jump back to a privilege mode and save this config. So as long as the syntax of my text editor configuration is correct, I can now just copy that and paste it in into the, the switch. So let's jump to the switch real quick. So the first command is take me to the global config mode. Let's just paste it in see what happens. Paste. It's generating the keys. They were already created, so they, they are going to be replaced. No errors. So now it should be fun and save the configuration. So if this works, I should be able to jump to the, my uh, PC and test this connectivity. So how do I do that? SSH minus L admin and the address of a switch is 10.1.1.10. So far, so good. It's asking me for the password. I provide the password and I'm logged into the switch. Now, if this is a real live, you'll probably have a terminal which has multiple uh, connections to consoles. And how do I jump between them? So what I want to do is without losing, because if I type in exit, I'm going to basically exit out from that session and I need to re-establish that SSH session one more time. What if I want to keep a few sessions open and just switch between them? Let's just do SSH one more time to the switch first. Provide a password. And now I can get back to my PC without terminating that session. How do I do that? Well, if I go ahead and say Control shift and six simultaneously and then let go of the keys and press X. It's going to take me back to my PC. Check the prompt here. Now, so show sessions. I still have session open to my switch. Now I want to open another session to my router. So SSH minus L4 username admin and 10.1.1.1. Let's just jump there by the password. I'm on my router as the prompt indicates that. So if I press Control Shift 6, let go X one more time and it'll show sessions. I have two sessions open. Now the one indicating with indicated with the asterisk is the session I'm gonna get back to if I press enter twice, which I did. So control shift 6 X if I do show session, if I want to return to my first session, I would say number one or resume one, whichever I will do. One will do just fine. And now I'm jumping to the switch. If I do control shift six X and show sessions again, the one with marked with an asterisk is the first one. So if I want to jump to a router, I'll press resume two or just two number and I'm going there. So how do I exit out? One way to exit out is just to type in exit on the device where SSH2. It'll terminate the session. So show sessions. Now I only have one session open. If I want to exit out from that session without jumping to this switch, I'll say disconnect number one. And do you want to close the connection? Yes, I want to close the connection. Now there are no sessions open. So that's how we can navigate between multiple sessions using Control Shift 6, let go and X for exit.